All right, we're live. We are we live. Are live with Mr. James Hodgins. So, all right. So, uh, before we get into our conversation, which we have absolutely zero direction or agenda, but that's okay. <laughs> I like I like getting lost in the swamp with James Hodgins. There's never a dull moment. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, John Butler is here, as you I'm can tell by his here. handsome face. <laughs> and um, we haven't been doing a steady amount of these photo buzzes because we've both been busy and often we'll just skip a week. So, but uh, just to let you all know, uh, Mike Long will be coming on in a few weeks. He doesn't know this yet, right, Johnny? <laughs> Not yet. I know <laughs> he's told me before he'll do it. Uh, just we haven't set up a date with him yet. I got Mark Zelinsky, who's an Ontario photographer. Uh, coincidentally, six years ago, I was out in the backwoods of Manitoulin Island. And there was Mark Zelinsky with his other dude, and he was taking pictures of this lighthouse. And I'm like, he's like, don't you recognize me? I'm like, no. He goes, I was at your wedding uh, in Wokefield. We did a, I did an all-day wedding workshop three years prior. I'm like, oh, you were there. Okay. Anyways, he was doing pictures for a, a, a coffee table book. That's his thing. So I'm trying to – I'm really having a hard time nailing him down. Uh, I got Michael Kaiser. James, you know Michael. He's a local. Michael. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, bought a paper exactly. backdrop from him. Two weeks ago and i'm like michael we got to get you on this so he's coming on ralph nogal who's a really successful wedding photographer from down in the toronto area I bought a camera off him off kijiji i never buy used cameras by the way ever unless it's got like three thousand kilometers on it three thousand clicks and uh, he had a the camera i wanted it was a sony um, a7r4 uh, he bought it because he thought you know he thought he was going to get into commercial photography he's a wedding photographer I don't know why he thought he needed a 62 megabyte camera to do commercial, but he did. My gain, I bought it and uh, we drove down there to pick it up. And I said, like, hey, I'd like to get you on our photo buzz. And of course, Robin Spencer's coming on, I believe, next week. And right now we got James Hodgins, a uh, longtime friend, longtime friend of the industry. A lot of people know James uh, and have uh, met him in person and or through some of these conversations we had. James, I know last year we had you on, I think it was December or so, and it was a really, really good conversation. I uh, always enjoy talking to you because uh, you have a lot of passion, a lot of insight. Uh, you're just a little bit crazy and a little bit sensible, a little just bit. Just a little bit. A little bit of philosophy and humor, and uh, but mostly you seem to understand and get the whole marketing thing and, and whatever, all that stuff, all that stuff. So uh, I don't know where we're going to go with this conversation. But let's talk about what you've been up to, if you don't mind, and we'll go from sure. there. Sure. Uh, well, since the last time we talked, uh, yeah, everything's just trash. Um, everything's kind of went downhill. <laughs> Everything crashed. You're addicted it's, to heroin. It's trash. Like, uh, yeah, things just haven't been good. Not good at all. So Your wife's um, addicted business, to meth. <laughs> business is down, and uh, yeah, just nothing but garbage coming in. And uh, <laughs> How come I don't believe you? You know, you know what I was thinking? You know what I was thinking about today, this morning? I was like... Uh, some somebody messaged me this morning on messenger and it was just i i, I didn't want to reply right away because uh it tends to be sometimes most of the time negative and all that and i'm trying to think i was like when's the last time i had a bad day like a full bad day where i just like was grumpy all day and it's like holy crap it's been it's been like over like a year now that i've had a bad day like, interesting a bad day in a long time i mean i've had bad moments where it's just like ah crap blah, blah. but i haven't had a bad day a day a day like you know when you're just all day even when i was sick no i haven't had a bad day in a long time and i don't know why i was thinking of that I that's an interesting thinking, thought I was literally just thinking it when i was having my coffee this morning well let's go there um can i ask you then yeah uh what was it what would a, a bad day look like and then uh, of course I, I guess a bad day would be we're just you know a negative full-on everything's negative borderline depression or anxiety you know, just wallowing in your own self pity, and right. just nobody talked to me. The world's against me. Everything sucks, right? You know, and then just yeah, and then and hope, hope that things get better without doing anything to make it better. That's a bad day. All right, that's, that's interesting. So it sounds like it's mostly internal, not external, for the most part. Yeah, or well, even like even if like if it's things like even external stuff like uh, we hemorrhaged. We've hemorrhaged a lot of money this week, right? Right. Just, just, and and my printer literally just crapped out on me, 
and like I spent an hour this morning trying to diagnose uh, diagnose it, and it turns out, yeah, it's just it's done. So there's another you know few hundred dollars. But again, it's just like, eh, well, eh, what, what am I going to do about it? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it reminded me it reminded me yesterday, Rob, of like, you know, it's that whole thing we talked about with gas prices, right? Yeah, right, gas right. Up, but I got to buy gas, so no point in crying about it. So it was like, mm-hmm. I got to buy a new printer. There's no point in crying about it. Right. All the- hammers this week is stuff i have to buy so there's no point in crying about it yeah whereas if i just sat there the whole day and be like oh my god i can't spend all this money I'm like yeah just so so it's just life stuff and it's uh yeah, one yeah, it's one's stuff. mindset and attitude that has changed you know i i say that but let's compare it to say what a really bad day would be you're off to a shoot and your freaking camera bag's not fully zipped and your your two thousand eight hundred dollar lens slips out and crashes to the ground that uh-huh. would be a bad day no, that wouldn't be a bad day. That'd be a bad moment. A bad moment. <laughs> exactly. Well, that would that would taint my day. Let's a lot put it of that. People, well, that's what I mean. But it would. So you say it would taint your day for the whole day. But really, what's done is done. Uh huh. You know, acknowledge it. Crap. Stupid son. Of a... <laughs> right. And then like, and what you said again, Rob. Like, oh God, it sucks. Well, it's not sucks, but it's it's amazing and crappy at the same time. How right you were all those years ago. Um, <laughs> you know. I'm I'm feeling wanna, I don't want to inflate your ego even more. No, no. But, you know, it's just like, like, yeah, so you acknowledge it, blah, 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 but it's like, okay, that's the problem. Stop focusing on the problem. What's the solution now? Well, the solution yeah. is mm-hmm. just pick, pick your crap up and finish your job, whatever you can. Yeah. And yeah. You know, so I've learned that a lot over the last, uh, the last two years. It's just, you know, no. uh, worry, worry about the stuff you can worry about. And again, like, you just, you literally can't go back 10 minutes ago. You can't go back a second ago. It just, you just can't. So no. just, just, yeah. So that whole bad day. And I, I wrote something a, a while ago in one of my little manuscripts uh, about, um, about having bad days. And uh, I don't know if I've said, talked about this before, but it's like everybody, you know, you say, Hey, how you been? How's your day been? And you're like, Oh, I had a bad day or I had a good day. And it's mm-hmm. like, Holy crap. Like that's 24 hours. Or let's say if you're awake, that's like, you know, 16 hours out of the whole day, you had a bad day, but what are you focusing on? Is it one thing that ruined your whole day? No. So the way I got to look at it is like, you know how many decisions you make in a whole day, like thousands of decisions right mm-hmm. down from, Oh, I got up. Oh, there's a win. Right. There's I, brushed, a win. I, I brushed my teeth before I had, you know, before I got dressed. There's a win. I got dressed. There's a win. I had breakfast. There's a win. You know, I checked my emails. There's a win. I didn't do this one job. There's a fail. You know, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't mow the lawn. There's a fail. I didn't do this. There's a fail. But at the end of the day, all I need to do is 51 percent to have a good day, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, I'm not yeah. going to do a lot of stuff, and I'm going to fail at a lot of stuff. But yeah. all those things that I did do is counted as a win. And if yeah. I have a 51 percent average, that means my day was a good day. That was a good day. Yeah. Yeah, my wife yeah. didn't yell at me today, so that's a good day. Yeah. Most most days are, uh, I would say, above and beyond fifty one percent. Exactly. Uh, you forgot to mention you got up in the morning and you got to pee, and you got to pee using modern plumbing. My <laughs> God, how <laughs> amazing is that? That's a good Flush. day. That's a good day. <laughs> I think, what, in part, though, not wholly, but in part, you're talking about having a different mindset. It's and- it's, it's all it is. It's a mindset. Yeah, yeah. So. Tapping into uh, gratitude, a sense of gratitude. So, so some people I talk to, like the, you know, the way the way I thought about this all day is because it's just always negative, 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 and it's yeah, like, yeah, it's always going to be negative, negative because you're always negative, negative. It's just it's, nothing's going to change unless you change your mindset. And, and mm-hmm. you know, if life sucks, yeah, it sucks. But if it sucks and you're negative, it's just going to keep on talking. Well, life is difficult. There's that, and uh, yep. that ain't never going to change. So. Um, you know, I was listening to Joe Rogan a few months ago and he was talking about why he works out. One of the reasons he, he works out is, and he, he makes it extra strenuous because he knows every time he does, he feels better at the end. Yep. And he segued into the conversation of, uh, I don't want to say happiness, but let's say happiness for lack of a better word, um, comes from struggle. And that's like a known thing. You know, when you overcome something major, you feel better at the end of the day. And it's through that pain and struggle that we uh, achieve greater heights. So, geez, we're, we're getting pretty deep. Here. I, have, I, have an, I have another buddy that I was talking <laughs> to, and another buddy, and um, he messaged me and he says, uh, you know, he's going through some tough times in life and all that. And he says, you know, I'm done hoping and praying that things are going to get better. And it's like, mm. yeah, sorry to say, yeah, that's right. Like hoping and praying ain't going to do jack shit. 
Like, you, no. need, you need to actually take action. Like, you have to literally take action, physically yeah. do something to yeah. change the, you know, change the way things happen throughout your day, throughout your life, throughout your hour. Mm -hmm. just, just waiting for it. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't happen. Stuff doesn't happen. You what know? about somebody who uh, says, well, there's nothing I can do? That's bullshit. <laughs> I'm going to clear it's myself. It's bullshit. it's bullshit. Really, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Whether it's like, like, the, well, I guess it all depends on your circumstances, but like, mm -hmm. it depends on what we're talking about on trying to get out of it. But there's nothing you can do. That's 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 bullshit. Mm -hmm. There's always something. Mm -hmm. Whether that's either talking, reading, learning, doing, yeah. you know, like help, like just something. There's always something. Change yeah. your routine. Like there's always something. Work with what you got. There's a lot. If you just open your eyes and it reminds me, I don't know, James, if you've met my friend, Dave Copeland, who I met in Toastmasters 20 years ago. I believe I know that name. So if you told me about him, I probably would say, yeah. He's got he's... cerebral palsy. Yes, had... I know him. Yep. He, yep. You know, he, he's... We had lunch with him in the shopping center one time. Right. Okay. Yeah. You did meet him. Yeah. He's um, very much afflicted and limited. So that guy published a book five years ago yep. and he went and became a financial planner and uh, he got a college degree when he was in high school they said that he was what's the word that starts with an r they yeah. wanted to put him in special ed and he's like mm -hmm. no that's not where i belong so he graduated with the rest of the kids and he went off to college but uh, i look at guys like that and think my god you know well, when, you, when you have like an affliction that either gets you later on in life or whatever it's mm -hmm. you know yes uh, your life is never going to be the way it was before no you have to actually at some point accept it Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, Rob, work with what you got to create the new life. Mm -hmm. Create a new life, so. But a lot of, uh, I think, I think, and I can't say this for myself because it's never had anything, ever, nothing like that's ever happened to me. But I bet the hardest part is letting go of you're never going to go back to the way things were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, so. You could say my wife is like that too. 15 years ago, she had a severe stroke that she lost her whole left side. But, uh, and she was in depression and now that's going through, but she got through it. And now she's my editor. Basically, most of the stuff we give our clients, she's there editing. And she was left handed when she lost her whole left side. She had to learn to do everything with her right hand. Right and now she's better at Photoshop than I am sometimes. So, wow. That's awesome. I didn't know that. So yeah. she could have, she could have lost both her arms. That would have pretty much forced her to use Photoshop with like her vision. <laughs> use a, a mouth. Wacom tablet with a mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's um, so yeah, so just haven't had a bad day in a long time. Things are good. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting observation to have that awareness to think to yourself, hmm, this is interesting. Very well, interesting. you know, that's the thing to have that awareness, like, man, things are good. Like, you know, people always say, um, you know, you see it a lot on Facebook and stuff like that, where you know, appreciate what you got, or you know, if a family member dies, they, you know, they put that post like appreciate the family you have living. Yeah, it's like I learned that lesson a long time ago. So I appreciate mm -hmm. everything I have on a daily basis. Yeah, because just like that. So, you know, I'm taking advantage of everything that's uh, we're at the age now where a lot of my friends are losing family and stuff like that. So I'm taking advantage that I still have both my parents and try to spend as much time as I can with them and stuff like that. And my loved ones, because so that when, you know, it, heavens forbid, when that time comes, I'm not going to look back and said, oh, man, I wish I would have spent more time with my family. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a real um, challenge when you lose your parents, especially your mom. You know, my mom passed away in 14, and it was, uh, like, whoa. Uh, but I still remember her, like, the last time I saw her, I remember hugging her, and I remember I still had that sensation, and, and I yeah. wish she was around. I wish I could have one more conversation with her. So, But here's, here's an interesting thought that I had. I think it was last December I was in the studio getting stuff ready and ready to pack up and leave and uh, i was like yeah it's been a good year man it's amazing that um i can earn a living taking pictures mm -hmm. i'm taking pictures and uh wow it just blows me away you know something i never really thought much about and or took for granted i don't want to say took for granted because i always like to think that i really worked and in, uh innovated a lot of the work that I got throughout the decades of my life on this planet as a photographer. And, uh, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of cool that I'm still able to do this. I was 60, 63 at the time when I had that revelation, similar to what you said, James, you know, you woke up or yesterday you were thinking to yourself, haven't had a bad day in about a year. I was thinking, yeah, it's really kind of cool that I'm still able to function as a full-time photographer, 
making a living that's pretty decent. It's amazing. You know, I hope it never goes away, but here it is and lots to be grateful for. And uh, there's fewer of us. So you're looking at us three full-time photographers. There's a, a, a smaller group of that. Now, James, you remember when you started the Professional Photographers Ontario in the branch? I so your, your cousin, John Robbie, who's also a full-time photographer doing mostly grads, uh, gave me all of the archives five weeks ago. Somehow it ended up in his basement from the branch meetings that, you know, we had album oh, yeah, 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 yeah. of memories. He had like really, two, eh? two boxes. And I'm, I'm like, he's like, what am I going to do with this? I'm like, I'll take it. That's awesome. <laughs> You're in there. I'm in there. And uh, it was going back to like 1986. Uh, I think it was mostly Gloria Miro who who collected right. a lot of these memories. And it was like so cool to go through them all and to reminisce and look at the changes, you know, like a lot of people have passed away. A lot of people have just gone on to do other things. But, you know, those were exciting times and they were very relevant to myself because it was formative, my formative years. And then, boom, there's James tw and I think in year 2000, you started coming out. I did, yeah. Remember we had Al Gilbert. He's yep. in there and got these group shots with you in there and all that <laughs> stuff. He had such a baby face. <laughs> <laughs> but all the history, you know, gives you, uh, you think back to what are the things that have a shaped and or formed oh, one's identity. So don't mind me i'm just looking for something in here oh good man so but anyways yeah and uh it's interesting and um y you remember big al l l gilbert for those who are not familiar with al he passed away about five or six years ago he was in his 90s uh probably one of the biggest names in canada well known in the states as well as a photographer and uh, he came up here to speak at our little humble little branch and um the guy, the guy won, or uh, somehow was awarded. I don't know if you win this or if you're awarded it, nominated. Twenty years prior, the Order of Canada, um, which is a uh, pretty big accom accomplishment as a, in photography. So um, he, he shot uh, Mayor Jim Gordon when he was uh, yeah. here in Sudbury. Yeah, yeah, and 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 to see the guy work, I was like. And he's well, at that time he was well into his seventies, but he had such a youthful and strong disposition. He he just somehow without trying, he took control of the entire situation without any like intensity or stress or or um, what seemed to be struggle. Uh, he just orchestrated and i thought to myself there's a guy who's been at this his entire life probably at that point in time going beyond 50 plus years who's achieved a level of mastery and uh i think that that's something there he is what was that james his book that, no no that's these are the pictures that i took in black and white oh you happen to have them yeah and i, I still have them because that's like one of the first uh things that i attended with you there's a nice picture there's a nice picture of rob there <laughs> <laughs> double, rub, double chin. Uh, there, there he is with his Hasselblad there shooting. Um, right. Shooting the mayor. He he set up. We set up right in uh, City right Hall. Down, right in City Hall. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was and, amazing. And then he did uh, like he did pictures of all of us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's my there's my cousin John. Yeah. So I was just getting into it, and I actually still have. Uh, I still have the. I did the. I still have the negative of the wow. classic. Hold the camera, you know. <laughs> that, he, that he that he did of me. Uh, <laughs> All right, wait, have, just, just to digress, I want to talk about this some more, but I want to digress for a second because James um, and I, but mostly James is doing. Thought this would be funny to hold a log or a fish. <laughs> <laughs> and we recreated that pose, making fun of the old school 60s photographer who always had a picture, you know, with their camera. Yeah. There's Robbo. There I am. Oh, look at me. Yeah, I was yeah, pushing, uh, pushing 210 pounds there. That's when I was, he photographed my wife as well. There she is. Yeah, that was, a, that was an amazing, uh, just amazing, like you said, Rob, to watch him work and just the style mm -hmm. of portraiture he did. Um, 
you know the an environmental portrait right somebody in their environment um, yeah yeah that, that that changed a lot of us there we looked at things a lot differently uh back yeah. then he was just such a nice uh such a nice person and then, that was the first time i met you two in person 2011 <laughs> at the inferno <laughs> Uh, I've been following you guys for like four years online with no BS, and then you had the Inferno, so I had to make sure I came. So no, no. <laughs> your hair hasn't changed at all, there, Don. I know nope. I'm the only one that hasn't changed. <laughs> I just got older. <laughs> you, got, you got you got a little more shine, is all. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's an interesting road when you look at the whole career choice, both as a business and as a working professional. I often struggle with uh, over the years, like, oh, should I be doing this? And then I keep going and I realize, yeah, I need to be, this is who I am. And I find that that reality, that identity, and often inspired to a minor existential crisis and or identity crisis, thinking, oh, maybe I should go get a real job um, for whatever reason. Sometimes I go through those. Not, not so much lately, but in the past, I remember going through them like, ah, maybe I should. Well, for me, it's like maybe I should get into a different business. But then I'm like, you know, no, you got a lot going on here. Just keep going. And uh, it doesn't take long for that attitude to change. But um, here's an interesting concept. I was actually telling your cousin John last week. Uh, John and I get together once a week. We, we play guitar. We you know, get together for a couple hours and we, we have our repertoire of songs we play. Hmm. We always, often have a conversation based on photography and struggles and uh, challenges and interesting little tidbits. And I was telling them how I'm really feeling that um, I'm really getting a heightened sense of mastery. I know that sounds a little bit arrogant. Is it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, big time. <laughs> but I have a sense no, of I'm mastery. just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I know and, and I know what you I know what you're I knew you were joking, but but I know exactly sense, what you're saying too. That sense of mastery, like I did six family shoots on Sunday and Monday for our uh, fall families at the park. And I brought that to that game, but mostly I got a sense of mastery when I'm shooting fairies. Cause that's what I do the most. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting. It's really good to see and have and hear and know and bring to the industry. And I think some people are at some level, largely intuitively people, clients see that as it's manifested. So I walk into a situation, I take control and, Try and be very pleasant about it very much the way al gilbert was when we were in awe of him at our branch our little humble branch meeting i mean people were like how the hell did you get al gilbert you know that's like getting karsh when karsh was alive that's almost at that level of um sort of celebrity and status but but i'm feeling it now in my own life now I don't know if you know at all what I'm talking about, James. I'm gearing that sort of observation, hoping for some feedback from James. A little less from Johnny because, John, you're sort of newer in the game. You're mm -hmm. you're still sort of at the early phases of your building. You've professionally been in the photography for the last 18 years now? No, I'd say almost 30 now. I started 92. Okay. Your own studio. Yeah, my own studio is probably going on now. I, I opened my own studio probably in 2009 okay so relatively so so so, so john's right there with us if, even uh -huh. if not more yeah than, more than me and i still have a brick and mortar studio whereas a lot of i'm the only one in my town no everybody else closed down brick and mortar wise they're all out of their house yeah yeah we got a bunch of those here too but same thing so so but anyways do you know what i do you know what i'm does any of this make sense and uh when you go to your jobs uh, I just before I ask that question, who's the Facebook user? Is that uh, Hark or? I'm just looking right now. Uh, Joseph Leduc just said hello, oh. everyone. And before oh. that, it was uh, Danielle. Danielle. My daughter, Danielle. Danielle? Yeah, she had put, uh, hey, Haji, hey, John, love to see the trio together. Oh. Danielle. Hey, Danielle, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> but jo Joseph Leduc was the other one. Danielle is currently working as a barista. Yeah, where? Uh, essentials on Barry down. Oh, nice. And uh, I was telling her yesterday, we spent some time yesterday, she helped assist me on my photo shoot. And I was like, I said, you know, your mother doesn't understand this whole being a barista thing, considering you went to college and you got a graphic design diploma and you've been working in 
in your field as a professional graphic designer for the last two years. And she quit that job and uh, it was getting a little boring and repetitive and she was alone. And she said, I want to be a barista. And it's like, all right, I don't understand it. However, hmm. however, sometimes you, it's sort of like taking a sabbatical, do something yep. different, get in front of people, recalibrate, rethink things through. Uh, and I think it's something that a lot of artists go through. Mm -hmm. And she's going on an artistic journey. So we'll see. And I'm sure it's going to be really cool in about a year from now when we look back and go, hey, let's connect the dots. True. Yeah, like in, especially with all the, tra uh, all the uh, you know, skills she's going to learn at this to run your coffee shop in Costa Rica when you open that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's all going to work out. I see the big picture right away. Like exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to convince mama bear well now it's a good idea i never thought of it that way james well, your, but... daughter, your, da your daughter will be with you there too so i mean yeah. well, just... i even find these podcasts that we do i mean we're on what now probably probably like 70 something by now and i think it helped relive my passion for photography i mean we all go through like you said those spurts where it's like okay i'm giving it up i'm throwing i'm just gonna sell my camera gear i'm gonna do something go get a real job as they say but then <laughs> just doing this and listening to the different people and just getting inspired more. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to try that. Or it just, mm -hmm. it does inspire you. I think mm -hmm. keeps that passion alive. Absolutely. You know, what inspires me what? money. I, I thought you were going to say that I was waiting for it. <laughs> money inspires me. <laughs> yeah. Where I get inspired is um, I try my best every year. It doesn't might not, it might be once, could be twice, could be 10 times, but I get together with a makeup and hair person of mine and we find models and we say, what do we want to do that's just for fun, just for us, for all our portfolios? Nobody's charging anybody. We're just going to come out with some amazing pictures that we can show on our portfolios and that and just do it for fun. And I think that reactivates my passion because that's cool. when you're always doing the same like family shoots and you're doing headshots and I love doing them, don't get me wrong, but it's always monotonous. It's the same. They all you have to get what the client wants on top of getting your personality in there. But when yeah. you could do those other self shoots that you want to do that just keep that passion alive just to get some of that creativity out that's what gets me going every year yeah. that's a that's a really good idea I, I don't think my wife would let me but it's a good idea <laughs> you just Bro do it for like one day or something like on a saturday or something when you're not busy or on a, a, a wednesday or something you just say hey what do we want to do get a meeting well, you just together? don't tell her no exactly okay. I, want, I, I want to go back to this comment that james made a minute ago and it all ties in together. Money. Well, you know, money's important. You know, obviously, though, it can be out of balance if it's the only thing. And we end up sort of compromising our uh, ethics and our values in some way. If, if anything that we do is done to excess and to compromise who our true authentic selves are. So I really believe, and even at a spiritual level, our journey here is to in, in enhance our, our consciousness to a higher level so that we can become aware of and the best version of ourselves. But, you know, we've all met and known people who pursued money and it kind of went out of balance. So, but other than that, let's put that aside, okay? There's a lot of people that have a real hard time with money, but I'm 100% with you on that one, James. Money is a primary motive and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. What we do with money is where it comes into play and being aware of that and saying, okay, well, I'm not going to let it control me, but I am going to pursue it. So I think it's important to have a money mindset that is going to help you grow. And, you know, I, I, I grew up with a real negative money mindset, just the way, you know, my, our, the stuff I heard growing up from my parents, you know, my dad went bankrupt two times. We were always in the uh, social housing, which I always look back at and I was like, what the hell were we doing in a social housing geared to income for most of my life growing up? I was like, that made no sense, you know, because my dad was perfectly capable of uh, making a lot more, uh, even though for the most part he was self-employed. But stuff got in the way, you know, and uh, I think a large part of the thing or the things that get in the way for many of us is uh, just the wrong mindset. So very true. Let's talk about that. James, what do you think about having the money mindset? Now, you mentioned money and well, I mean, why is it important? <laughs> well, I mean, if uh, if if you're a photographer, let's use photography, of course, because okay. if you're a photographer and <laughs> you're not doing it for money, then you're just a hobbyist. Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, really, I mean, that, that's what it is. Uh, I'm trying to find a, a note I had written here somewhere. Nothing um, wrong with being a hobbyist either, by the way. I mean, money, it, like, so like for me, money is a huge motivation. And it's not that uh, I'm, I'm not saying like, I want, I like money. I want more money. Give me money. Cause I've got making lots of money. I'm hmm. saying m money is a motivator because if I don't do my job, I don't pay my mortgage, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I don't put food on the table. So that's the motivation. I need money. That's my motivation to uh, do photography because it's the one thing I'm good at. Now, mind you, uh, it's also the motivation that keeps me creative because mm -hmm. in order for me to keep getting work, I have to keep being creative and doing different stuff, staying with the times, putting good content out there and not this, like you said, John, the monotonous stuff over and over because yeah. If I keep putting the same stuff over and over, well, eventually the clients are going to be like, well, you're just putting the same stuff out over and over. We need something different. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, that's like, that's how money is the motivator to me. So money is kind of like, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it makes money makes me a better photographer. Plain exactly. <laughs> it's true. And, and that's how Plain I got simple. one of my new dance studios. Cause we have a new dance studio this year we're doing, we have two other ones, but this is a third one we're doing. And, <laughs> One thing, it's the bigger one too. It's got 300 students and that's the one I wanted. But one thing she said is uh, when we shoot it, I don't want mine looking like the other studios. So whatever backdrop you're using for the other studios, use a different one for me because I don't want to look like the other studios. And it breaks up that monotony. They don't, the clients don't want to see the same thing no. over because then they're afraid their stuff is going to look like their competition stuff. And they want exactly, to look different. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. So if you want to make more money, you've got to be versatile and be willing to change. I think that's a good thing too. Like you said, John, that you're like, you actually book sessions for yourself to go do just for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same thing too. Like I, I don't do a lot of them, but every once in a while, I like to do something just, just for me. Actually, I was talking to one of my friends yesterday cause she popped in when I was doing the headshots and I shot images of uh, her, her son and, and, and his horse. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, I really enjoyed that, you know? And she's like, hey, do you miss doing portraiture? And I was like, no, I don't. But what I really enjoyed about that was just like, there was just, there's no pressure at all. I wasn't doing it for money. Right, I, was just, right. I was just doing it for the fact of, I had pictures in my head that I wanted to do. And I said, and exactly what I gave you is exactly what I pictured in my head. And it just kept those creative juices flowing. Yeah. I, I, I thought of another thing yesterday when I was driving home. Um, because I had a compliment yesterday from somebody that was, um, they said, you know, your, your underground photography is like some of the best I've seen. You're amazing. And I, and they all, I always get that your underground photography is amazing. And it's like, you know, I do a lot of above ground too. <laughs> pretty freaking good. You know what I mean? And, and then, you know, and, and somebody asked the question, do you shoot a lot of this? Because I see a lot of like uh, underground stuff. And I was like, I kept thinking of that movie Quigley down under with Tom Selleck. And it's like, you know, just because I don't show it doesn't mean I don't know how to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But uh, well, your underground stuff is pretty good. I mean, there's that. Yeah, but my above ground stuff's not bad either. Yeah. Well, if you're doing industrial mining stuff and it's under or above, does it really matter? It's still under the same umbrella. Yeah. yeah. The the only not the only issue I have is just that I because I had this discussion with another client yesterday is I only show images that the client have used. Okay. publicly yeah i have thousands of images that i'm dying to actually showcase right but i won't they'll probably yeah. never they'll probably never be seen by the, exactly. by the by is the it because public. of privacy issues and they just uh, don't want you to they don't want that work shown no they probably wouldn't say anything at all but the thing is, is like sometimes my clients start are, are still using images that I sh like from two years ago, three years ago. They're just starting right, yeah. to use them now. So my whole thing for me is uh, I don't want to showcase an image that my client hasn't used because it almost takes away that wow factor right, right. Yeah. for the client, right? Yep. So, uh, or sometimes sometimes maybe the employee is no longer working there, so they don't want to yeah. show that or, or something. So I literally only show images that my that I have found so any of the images that I show, you could easily find on the internet if you went and saw yeah. them, you know. No. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, got, got, I've, got, I've got loads, thousands of images, thousands of almost like like great images yeah. uh, of everything that will probably never be seen. And on the until same I'm way, ready, like, sorry, until I'm ready to retire and I just don't give a crap. And it's like, here they all are. I tell a lot of my, especially my headshot clients, I tell them I won't use, like I'm not the type, a lot of here will do sneak peeks. They do a shoot and then here's a sneak peek from my shoot, which I used to do too. 
But like yeah. you said, it's that wow factor. You want to give the client the chance. Like if I'm doing a headshot because she's becoming a new real estate agent, let them be the mm -hmm. first one to show it. Let mm -hmm. them showcase it for you and then post it. Say, oh, by the way, here's a shoot I did for someone. So I'm the same way with you. I tell my clients that I won't post it until you. And then also, like you said, post the ones that they post because you know they like those shots. Exactly. You might have ones that you love, but maybe the client doesn't like or doesn't want out there. Exactly. And you post it out there and it's like, oh, why did they use that? Put ones out there that the client, you know, they like because they used it. Exactly. Exactly. I uh, came up with a strategy a few months ago to address this exact situation. And I like to pose um, or post a lot of fairy portraits because that's primarily what I do. Mm -hmm. I always advise anybody, you know, promote, push, market with the images and the niches that you're already really good in. A uh, little side example, you know, we have a billboard and Tina wanted to put a family portrait on there when we first got that billboard seven years ago. And I'm like, thinking about it, I'm thinking about it. I said, no, our primary thing is the fairies and they're much more high impact images. So we're going to go with that. She disagreed with me, but I know I'm right this one time, <laughs> but don't tell her that. Uh, <laughs> but no, the, the, the idea that, okay, this is what I do. This is what I want to show off. Um, you know, I was, uh, let me give you another side example to the side example to exempt, exemplify what I'm trying to say here. Uh, we had supper two weeks ago with my wife's cousin who lives in Sudbury. Once a year, we get together with her and her husband. Her husband, very successful guy who sold parts to the um, crushing industry. Okay, so he started the business now. He's very successful. He's just retired, uh, done very, very well. He's got 50 employees. That's how good and how big his company is. So we're just, I'm shooting the shit with him because I really like talking to guys like this, right? He's got a lot of business experience and, you know, not too many people are going to ask him the stuff I'm going to ask him. They're all going to talk to him about, you know, his golf game, but I want to know his business. And he said something that was really interesting. He hired an accountant lady who came in to do some auditing and she said to him, she said, you know, you got to get rid of this and this and this. And he was like, you're right. And he did. Those areas were areas that he thought were going to be lucrative and they had to do with manufacturing. He realized that it wasn't um, a very lucrative area. And she was the one that had to sort of like force his head to look at it. So you got to get rid of this. And he really admired or respected her. And actually he ended up hiring her and because of that uh, ability that she had. But my point is that he thought that let's go down into these other areas and, and he got away from his main thing. This is what I'm getting at. So I'm I'm a, a guy who buys from the wholesaler and I, I'm a middleman. I got a very successful business. Now I'm going to start manufacturing and it wasn't working out. So uh, if you do that in your photography business and you're trying to develop new niches, uh, you're going to find that it's just oftentimes we're deluding ourselves. Not always. Sometimes we hit the mark and we get, hit the ball out of the park. But for me, it's like... Uh, I want to promote and use the images that I really want to pursue that are the most lucrative, the biggest, richest markets and the ones that I'm the most niched into. So I told Tina a few months ago, I said, uh, all these fairy days we're doing, I want to email them all. And I create, I crafted an email with a couple of links in there. And I asked them for two things. I said, can we have permission to use your images? I never used to ask for permission, by the way. <laughs> Nobody ever complained. No. But I'm always, I, I never felt right about it. So um, I said, well, I'm going to email them and I'm going to ask them for permission to use their images in social media and blogging. And I'm going to ask them to go and give us a uh, Google review in the same email. So we just started doing that like two weeks ago. And, and I got a list of, uh, she's, Tina's written down on a post that here it is. I got one, two, three, four, five, six so far with many more to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are people who have said, yeah, 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 no, you can use my images. So now I have this folder with all these images. I got many, many more. We haven't even emailed the clients that we shot at your, your studio, John, three, mm -hmm. four weeks ago. We haven't even I'm got sure a lot of them would let you. Yeah. But the idea is we got this rich area where we're already playing in and we're already harvesting so many wonderful experiences and I want to go and get their permission. So make it sort of like seamless that there's nothing left hanging and I don't have any shame or guilt or doubt about whether or not I should be using their images. I got their explicit um, 
permission. So um, there, there might be something you could do, James, with the same. I don't know if it. Oh, I have. I have in the past. I'll, I'll email. Like if I if it's not that I don't have content, but uh, usually I'll. Uh, no. I don't know. I have enough content that I'm not too worried about it. But because um, okay. like every every morning I'm I, you know, I scour every morning. I literally scour the internet, and take screenshots of wherever my images are used. So then, oh, really? ready to, yeah. So when I'm ready to post something, I just. Uh, I go to my phone, I go to my screenshots. I was like, oh, yeah, that one there. Okay. And that's what I'll work on it. So that's cool. That yeah. is cool. Yeah. So I usually spend about an hour every morning. Um, just, you know, I'll I'll go to their websites, I'll download their annual reports, I'll get all their, you know, all their press releases, social media, everything, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. See, very much that's the same strategy in many ways. You know, they're not going to mind because they're already using them. Well, it's public there. and anybody could literally take it now and. But it's yeah. more publicity for them too. So well, why would that too? Like even this morning, I you know I posted my images this morning from uh, one of my clients, and then you know I tagged their their press release in it, and I also tagged the person who hired me, and it said they my clients don't mind me sh sharing my stuff or their stuff on my social uh, media feeds because it gets it gets looked at a lot. Like I get a lot of a lot of views, right? So yeah. Um, now you used to. I remember when you started the mining, you used to come out with. Um, a little like a booklet like a little pamphlet that used yep. to snail mail to all your clients like an eight and a half by eleven you put in a nice envelope and do you still do that it's all pdf now though okay Dang, what was uh, everything's pdf what's that what was that i don't remember i have a brochure that just like you know like just talks about me and my you know what i do and how i do it and just like a q a type thing and uh yeah i send that out so anytime I send out a rate sheet, um, I'll, I'll send that along, along as well. So. All right. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know if you guys have a social media posting strategy, but I, I'm just a big believer in it. And, uh, and I, I do three a day. I set them up first thing in the morning. Uh, I was using Hootsuite, but it's 500 bucks a year. So I went mm -hmm. to the version of Hootsuite. Are either of you guys using any social media management software? I'm looking at Social Pilot, Pilot yeah. which I used to use, but they're all. I'm not. I'm not. I just do it. I just do it in the morning. Um, I mean, if I had to, uh, most of the times, um, you know, for scheduling, uh, I'm usually always around some sort of Wi-Fi within a few days or whatever. So I'll actually I'll pre-write all the social media to a private uh, social media platform that I have. And then on the day of, I just copy and paste, you know, right. It takes like Smart. two seconds. Uh, I don't post three a day. I find that's too much, Rob, um, mm -hmm. because you're, you're, you're kind of eventually if you're put, yeah, eventually people are just going to be like, Ch -ch -ch. I like to do uh, one every two, three days. Yeah. yeah. And, I have to uh, up my game. Yeah, I do. I do. So I like usually like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe one on the weekend. If, if my clients have more, um, you know, they want to add, uh, or say they got trade shows coming up. Cause I do, I do some of my clients, uh, social media now. So, um, so far they've all been happy. So I mean, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's working. Every, out. every time I see them, they're like, Oh yeah, we're happy. Right. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Well, I just copied Rob a little bit with his fairy portraits. Whenever he comes here for fairy portraits, he has the link there that people click on. It goes to a special page on his website that explains everything and all that. So I did that for my Christmas portraits this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I advertised my, my portraits uh, for our third annual Christmas minis that, cause we never do minis Nat. This is one of the wings we do and made my own little webpage with it, which has the link to Calendly to where you can go and book your day and time through the calendar right. there. Right. And then it has a, a link there that you have to prepay it of course up front and you can either e-transfer to this one or you can pay by credit card on this one it goes to my square thing and uh trying that out for the first time and it seems to be working really well the next step is to do a video like rob does where it's like a info video well the thing is is like back in the day like when we used to create any sort of campaign to do any sort of promotion or whatever you know we we're firm believers like especially on your website answer as many questions as you possibly can preemptive with that info so when they call you they're not asking all those questions yeah. They're literally like almost 90% ready to just give you the money. You know, mm -hmm. they might have one or two, but answer as many questions as you think your client is possibly going to ask about your event. How much does yeah. it cost? What does it do? What do I need to like answer them all? Because that's what people want to see. Okay. That's all good. 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 So when they call you or 
you know, back in the day they used to call. Now we just do it online. They're just ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's the best way to do anything now. Answer every question you could possibly think about. Mm -hmm. Right? Any objection? Any curiosity thing? Exactly. Right? Any uh, positive thing? Any uh, um, benefit? Because yeah. that also gets rid of a lot of the tire kickers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like it's like those LinkedIn marketplace ads. My buddy and I have a little thing we do as well because we're always checking uh, marketplace ads just for you know stuff that we want to buy or whatever. And we'll find ones and we'll just screenshot it or send the link. Is it? It's like those people that a they post the wrong picture of the product they're trying to sell and then just like then they just put like for sale. Hmm. <laughs> all right. So what? Now I got to message you and ask all these questions. Yeah. I agree. You know, like, like, or they'll put a motorcycle. Like, let's just use motorcycles because this is what I see a lot of. They'll put the bike and say, uh, for sale, message me. Mm -hmm. well, geez, why would you not put the make, the model, the year, like, you know, like everything you possibly can in that freaking, in your description. Yeah. Right. So that when I actually message you, I don't have to ask you all those mundane, stupid questions that you might have to answer 40, 50 times because mm -hmm. everybody's going to, like, it just drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. Right. Fill in that, fill in that space. Like when you put information out there, Rob, remember that when you when you put a printed thing out there, yeah. use both sides of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> that blank, that blank piece of paper on the back side ain't doing nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put something. Very true. So that's like oh, that just uh, that actually reminded me. Actually, it just like even for instance, I think I just. I think the that. next step I gotta do is I'm gonna talk to a lot of my past clients from my special and the ones from this one and get some testimonials. From Thanks straight. So next time I do it, we'll put some testimonials on there. Yeah. Thanks straight. Remember, uh, remember this thing there, Rob, uh, when that kid came in to do some raking the leaves and he dropped in that, he dropped in a flyer into my, uh, into my and it, was, it just had like, it was a very basic generic, like one page, uh, one page flyer. So I actually hunted him down the street and I said, listen, let me redo it for you. And we'll like, Again, both sides answer as many questions as you possibly can. And um, he had so much business he had to, he, from that flyer that I made for him. He had so much business he had to turn it. He had to turn business down. Yeah. And then yeah. the next in the next year he came back to thank me again, just saying like, "Man, like, thank you so much. Like, answer as many questions as you possibly can for your clients before you actually have to interact with your clients." That's cool. I hope he uh, never forgets that. You know, people often, as they get more successful, tend to forget those things and st strategies and those steps that led them to. And and uh, you know, sometimes you think, "Oh man, I'm just so good. I got all this work, and look how successful I am." Forgetting that it was that style of communication that worked for him. Uh -huh. So it's important to stay focused on that. Uh, no matter where you are in the game so that you can uh, use it over and over and over again. It's, it, you know, it's hard when you're very successful, you don't have the compulsion to want to use strategies like that because, hell, things are working out. However, exactly. never take it for granted. So you want to keep doing what needs to be done in order to, uh, that's, that's the way I see it. So, so John, you're, uh, you're doing your mini sessions. You just, yeah. just fired that up? I fired it up... Uh... What's today? Thursday, Wednesday? No, today's what? Wednesday? Thursday. Monday, I think I put it out there. And within the first, I think, four hours, I had five uh, uh, bookings already. That's very positive. So how many yeah. can you do over the time period you've allotted? We allotted 34 slots, I think. It's uh, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, um, starting the October 28th, 29th, 30th, because we wanted to get them done so we can have people come in that week, do their viewings, and if they can't do it, we'll do it on Zoom and get them all back before Christmas so they can get their stuff for Christmas time. That's the thing. Eh? So, so are you are you updating that countdown? So you've booked five already? So are you putting a post saying uh, only this many slots left? I haven't put any slots yet, no, because like I said, it's only been out for about four days now. So mm -hmm. um, as time goes on, I will put, hey, it's starting to sell up fast. Make sure you get on so you don't so lose you should, out. You, you, should, you should be putting that the, like within that five hours. You say, hey, only this many slots. That sense of urgency is what people yep. what people are going to be like. Even lie a bit and slap off a few slots and say, yeah, we only have 15 slots left. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know what I mean? Because that'll, they gonna know? That'll, get, that'll get people through like to say, okay, I got to act now. Like I got to, yep. I, I shouldn't wait for this. 
No, exactly. Uh, every another, time you every time you fill a slot, I'd be putting another post out saying, "Oh, another slot on." And see what I use? I use a company called Calendly to do my bookings for me. Uh, I do the free account right now, and if it takes off, I might use it a, pay, a paid account in the future. But it's great because it has all my stuff on it. It has the dates I want and the exact time slots. That's awesome. So people just when they click on the link, it takes them to that calendar. They click on one of those three days that they want. It mm -hmm. shows them all the times that are available. They click on it and say confirm, and then it asks them for their name, their phone number. Is there any um, anything that we should know regarding your shoot? And I'm glad I put that because um, by doing that, I had one of them that booked me mention that, okay, they have, uh, it's them and their husband and their four kids, and their youngest one has autism. I want to know that stuff because then I can contact them and say, okay, I saw that you have this. What triggers them? So I know mm -hmm. when they're there to make sure we don't trigger them off and that we can get the yep. best shots. Perfect. So... I'd fill in a few of those slots and book them all up with like fake names. Yeah. And then after a while, I'll just say, oh, we had a few uh, last minute cancellations. We've got three slots open now. So, like, you know. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So, have you considered using pay per click? Uh, that's, that's a good, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, the automated like that. That uh, Again, that's just like delegating somebody else to do it, frees up your time to do better things. Exactly. Pay per click. Never heard of it. Well, Facebook ads. Oh, okay. Actually, I did do a boost this uh, yes last night before I went home. I went and did a thirty-five dollar boost just to see for one week, and so it says it's going to be between eight hundred to possibly one two two k, I guess, amount of views in that one week, and they estimate maybe thirteen to seventy something view or clicks, maybe. Select per day. Uh, location and gender. Age? Yeah, I picked location, and I picked ages between twenty and sixty. So. Okay. That, cause... I, I would go after 30 to 50 women only. Yeah. Well, I get a lot of 20 something year olds because a lot of them, I don't know about your guys, but here there's a lot of younger families nowadays and younger parents. And okay. so, and they all want things and that, but I, I've got to change it to just women. Cause I think I have it on both, but then guys are never the ones that call me for family portraits. It's usually the yeah. women. You want to eliminate that. So, so um, that was a strategy I used when I used to do the showcase here. We used to do pedal wall showcase, which was a three day trade show where all different companies you pay like 200 bucks 300 bucks for a booth for the three days and i always told the uh, organizer put me where the women's booths are the makeup the uh mm -hmm. all that because don't put me where the power tools are and stuff like that the, the guys will walk right by my booth put me where the women are because they're the ones that hire me and that works yeah, you have to clarify that you can't just say i just yeah. put me where the women are <laughs> yeah you have to clarify on why exactly because the, usually the women especially family portraits the women are the ones that will that they got actually, the buying power They'll actually book you, and then they'll drag the husbands and kids to exactly. the Exactly. That's exactly it. They get the money. Yep. They get the power. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. yep. Tractor shot. Yeah, I just shot that a few days ago, and oh, conditions were perfect. They live out in the country. I shot this family 10 years ago, and the, the mom showed me. She had a big wall portrait, and I shot her as a baby's first year, him too. And uh, it was really weird because when she showed me the picture I shot of them 10 years ago, I was a Sunday. I remembered exactly that shoot, and I remembered that weekend because the day before I shot a wedding, and uh, I had like 750 images on one of my cards that went corrupt. Mm. Funny how I, you associate that, right? Yeah. I told her, I, I remember doing you. I photographed you guys. I was really stressed out that day because of what happened, and the images I was able to get them back. And just sort of a little side topic here. Uh, I had purchased all new Lexar cards. And then I went back to Henry's. I said, these cards are crap. I'm never buying these again. Because I did a bit of research, and I found out that Lexar's got it real sketchy. So I went back to SanDisk, and that scared the hell out of me. James, you know uh, Reno's Pastry in town? Mm -hmm. It was his daughter. Oh, uh, yeah. Italian couple. Uh, she owns that hair salon, She Nils in the mall. Yeah, very successful business. Yeah, it's always scary when that crap happens. They had one daughter, one big wedding, Caruso Club, the whole nine yards, and I had like 750 shots that were corrupt. And I went back to the camera store, and the guy managed to recover them for me. I couldn't do it. I tried everything. I tried data rescue, and I scared the hell out of me. Anyways, that's a little side note. I just want to show you guys one more thing here. This is this is from uh, my last wedding two weeks ago. We did a pop-up wedding. I you see the bungee cords? Yeah. <laughs> I bought those at Princess Auto with mm. tent pegs. That's a good idea, Rob. Yeah, and it worked because a little bit of wind and that, I you can't see it, but it's a 36-inch Octodome on a uh, Godox AD600 or 600BM. And it worked. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. <laughs> but it, and it was a windy day that day. So 
I've been taking sandbags with me, two or three sandbags, just in case. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. And uh, I don't know which is stabler. If you got a good breeze and you got a big, big octodome, how how much sandbag and or bungee cords? I have a sense that this would be more secure. And if I needed to double it up, I would just put. I have four of these cords. I could put one on each each quarter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it really worked. So I was yeah. excited about that. I just wanted to show you guys that. So. That's what's new and exciting in my life. My bungee cords. My bungee cords. I just See, bought a new, is... I bought my first stand bag, hard rolling stand bag for the first time. It cost me like freaking seven hundred bucks, but man, Jeez. it's freaking yeah. But it's it's like the Cadillac of stand bags. <laughs> I needed something hard and long, and I needed something rollable, and uh, you know, something um, that's going to take something that's going to take some abuse when I travel. What's it um, called? I want to search. It's it's, it's uh, Avenger. It's uh, the oh, C. Avengers, yeah. Yeah, the C C stand Avenger bag. Um, yeah, it's freaking, it's freaking awesome. Love it. I love it. It's made for photographers. It's made. Yeah, it's right actually right. made for videographers because it holds the big uh, C big stand uh, yeah. um, stands. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I just use it for my stand. Seven hundred forty nine dollars. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. But yeah, it's uh, it was an, it. Uh, I'm very 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 happy with it. So it's rugged. Very, very rugged. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, the ad there. I was telling you guys about there that I put in my Facebook. Oh, nice. uh, and then I, when you click on it, it goes to, and of course I'm going to have to stop showing this cause it's taking me to a different page now. Um, cause it, now I, it's actually taking me to my website, which is what I want to do. Oh. I want to get people onto my website cause then they might look at other stuff. That's right. And so then it goes to, to that page. So it's got nice. some samples from before, mm -hmm. tells all the stuff about it. Nice. Uh, some sample pictures from previous two years. And then as you can see, it says right here to book your session, go to here. And then, and then when you click there, look at this, I'm just going from page to page here. <laughs> That's what you do. You want to keep them on your uh, exactly. keep them on your website for the longest. And then it goes to this. This is the Calendly thing here. So it shows you the calendar there. Right. It also has a whole thing, all the write up about it and how you have to pay up front uh, to book it. Tells you everything about it. And there's your calendar, the days that are available. And when you click on it, um, it opens up the nice. time slots that are available for that day. You just pick mm -hmm. the day you want. So you want that time, you hit confirm, it brings you to here and it has everything there. The only thing I don't do, because you have to get a paint account is take the money right from there. But right, they use right. Stripe in that and I use Square and they don't use Square yet. Okay. So right now it does that. And then I do a follow-up email afterwards just to let them know that I got your order. Thanks for congratulations for coming. And remember to secure your spot, you have to prepay. Here's the two choices you can do to go pay for it. And, uh, or else we'll have to open up your spot to somebody else, basically. James, why didn't you use the uh, buy an impact LKB light kick rolling C stand black for a hundred dollars? Well, there's a reason why something costs a hundred dollars and something costs a hundred and you know seven hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> it would uh, probably, be, probably be crap for what I put them through. Yeah, so that's the uh, well, I knew. I, I knew had one. I, I had one newer bag that I bought that was like fairly cheap, and it lasted literally one day underground. That's it, eh? Both wheels broke off it. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, you need something rugged. So, okay, cool. I just wanted to point that out. Sometimes, you know, it's yeah. uh, compromising uh, what we're after for the right reasons. And so, John, me, that's cool that how, like that just does all that legwork for you. Because, again, it's, it's almost like you delegated a virtual assistant now to do all that stuff. So now you're not on the phone dealing with that day in day out you're sitting there doing what you do best which is marketing photography mm -hmm. and making money no exactly and then because it used to be people would be calling or emailing me i want to book this time can i book that time how can i pay for it and you spend the next couple of weeks sitting there on the phone or on the email and, that, and i can't do my other stuff so like exactly. you said this way it takes care of everything for me it's all automated yeah, yeah that's cool and free exactly <sighs> that's even better that's even better and using the utilities I have, I already have Square online banking or online where I could take people's credit cards online that way. So yeah. why not take advantage of it? I'm already paying for it. Why not take advantage of it? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Sense. It's one o'clock. 
What's that? One o'clock. Our time's up. You guys keep oh, talking. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't you have a lot of work to do? Yeah, I gotta go work for some images. Yeah. No. Yeah. Today yeah. was supposed to be hunting day for you, but the weather's yeah, crap. It's crappy and rainy outside, so I stayed home. So, I did the more responsible thing. Get caught up in your work. No. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on board, James, and doing this I again. Do too, yeah. Yeah, Always. no problem. Next time we'll talk shop. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes stuff like this is what people want to hear too. They don't always want to hear photography. They want to hear how to run a business. Yeah. Uh, running a business is fun. Yeah. Easy peasy. We can oh. do a whole couple hours just on that. It's pretty well. Pretty well. So no, I appreciate you coming back on. Yeah, anytime. anytime I'm still going to make it down to Sudbury one day and visit all you guys and instead of you guys always coming down here. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you all take off. We're Rocky's busy that day. Costa Rica. Ro Haji goes and hides in a cave somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm out in of a mine. Country. He's I'm gone. Out of country that day. Yeah, he'll be in a mine somewhere. Rob will be in Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> John will be like, where is everybody? I'll just take all your business. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good luck on your work. All right, good guys. Good luck on your All right, man. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, we'll Thanks. talk. Thanks. All right. See you later. Okay, bye.